for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 30. Are you totally relaxed? The five levels of relaxation. This is just a continuation from last week's podcast when we talked about relaxed into being, and we talked all about relaxation. Today, I'd like to talk about the five levels of relaxation. Let's keep in mind that relaxation is the state of being free from tension and anxiety. Some of us say that we just need to loosen up, unwind a bit, and let go. And that's what we usually define relaxation as. But if we look at relaxation defined from a scientific perspective, we define relaxation as restoring the system to equilibrium or balance. And remember, when we talk about healing, what is healing? Healing is homeostasis, bringing a system back into balance. So relaxation is really one component of restoring our system to equilibrium or balance. It brings us back to homeostasis and it heals our body, our body, mind, and spiritual complex. So today, when I talk about the five levels of relaxation, we'll go through them, and I'll talk to you about how you can activate those. I like to refer to the scientific definition because it's in line with the healing force. That is, again, bring our system back into balance or homeostasis. Let's keep in mind also that relaxation is a learned response and must be done systematically to reap its full benefits. And whenever we enter the deep stages of relaxation, as I mentioned last week, we get a substantial cognitive boost and it helps our cells repair and regenerate themselves. And we also get the physiological benefits to our whole physical being and our organ systems. The key is to be able to bring your whole being into a relaxed state. Again, as I mentioned in the last podcast, to relax, we need to have a few things in place. We needed to have a stable and comfortable body. If the body's comfortable, then it's easier to relax. We spoke about the flexibility of uh, the body and the energy of the mind. A balanced breath with little to no pause to regulate our nervous system and a process that's repeatable and systematic. And that's why we call it systematic relaxation. Although I'm partial, as I said, to systematic relaxation, because of its complete benefits, you can choose something that resonates with you. The key is to just take action and establish the habit of relaxation. And again, five or 10 minutes once or twice per day is fine. And keep in mind, and that's what we're going to talk about right now, there are five levels we can address with our relaxation and its practice. Let's go over them now. The first one is physical relaxation, and that's for the body. Relaxing the physical body promotes balance to the nervous system, calms the mind, and produces emotional stability. How do we manage this? It's always important we could talk about what it is, but how do we manage it? Of course, we manage it with our exercise and stretching. This is the most known level of relaxation to everyone, the physical. And it happens when we let go of our body tension. And again, as I mentioned, exercise and stretching helps release physical tension. And yoga, everyone's out there doing yoga as a physical exercise, but yoga is more than that. We all know that in this community, it's a deeper practice of working with all the subtle energies of the body. But just doing the postures is a great start and it's a great way to release physical tension. So the first level of relaxation is relaxation of the physical body. The second level is nervous system relaxation, and that's providing relaxation to the central or and or peripheral nervous system. And this is a bit more complex practice because it relies on the ability for us to breathe diaphragmatically. You have all heard me say we must breathe using the diaphragm. Diaphragmatic breathing is the essential component to not only relaxation, but to to master your health. We put it in all our programs because it's the core fundamental root for health and vitality. 
When we use our diaphragm muscle to breathe rather than our chest muscles, we regulate the fight or flight response. Uh, we were able to regulate that. So we're not in that sympathetic, oh my gosh, what's happening? We're not fleeing from fear. We're not activating our whole nervous system. So diaphragmatic breathing helps us keep that in check. And it also helps to regulate our heart rate and slow it down. And we become healthy. It balances those inner organs, as I said, regulates our heart rate, blood pressure, even our gastrointestinal motility. In other words, how we digest our food, how we take our food in and our nourishment, and our overall vitality benefits from that. Did you ever consider yourself on emotional overload? Well, emotional relaxation is our third level of relaxation, and that brings stability in our moods. It's managed by being aware of our desires. Now, this even gets deeper into the concept of that. As I mentioned, you can do the exercise. You can also do diaphragmatic breathing that helps with emotional relaxation. But even on a deeper level, we become aware of our desires, what we want. What do we want to get out of life? What do we what do we gravitate towards to be happy? And what do we need to do so we don't create negative emotions? Practices to, co- to consider to relax emotionally are to really let go of our chronic negative feelings. And we can do that by journaling, self-talk, or finding the root cause. In other words, instead of, I'm going to use an example, instead of getting, let yourself get angry, but instead of judging yourself, allow yourself to be angry, not to play out the anger, but analyze it, look at it and see, wow, what is it that I really desire that's not happening for me that's bringing up this anger? We can work again with the physical body through yoga asana because the mind and body are one. Always keep that in mind. Whenever you do something for the body, you will benefit or not benefit the mind because the mind and body are one. The body is just a physical representation of the mind. The fourth level of relaxation is mental relaxation, and this is where we work with building resilience. Resilience is the ability to snap back after something gets in our way that takes us out of balance. Usually we define that as stress. If something comes up and we have a stressful situation, how fast do we come back? And that's when we're mentally resilient, we have mental relaxation. A tense mind is one that's disturbed, distracted, and stupefied. Stupefied meaning it's dull. It doesn't want to do anything and engage. To overcome the three conditions of a tense mind, we can use the practice of mindfulness and meditation. I'm not using mindfulness as a meditation practice here because they're separate. Meditation is bringing mindfulness into focus. Mindfulness is a practice of training our, uh, you know, what we're doing day to day within our own being. And usually it's focusing on just the breath. Learning to direct and focus our awareness, which is even deeper than our mindfulness, because the mind is full, you know, we don't want the mind, the mind is one entity, but awareness is beyond that. So when we focus our awareness, it allows the mind, again, the mind to be relaxed, clear, tranquil, and one pointed. These are the three qualities of a person who is established in being with mental relaxation, a clear, tranquil, and one pointed mind. And how do we get that? Well, we get that with practicing mindfulness and meditation. And the fifth step, before I tell you what it exactly is, I always ask people, do you know your purpose in life? Do you know your purpose in life that you can experience spiritual relaxation? Have you ever heard of spiritual relaxation? Most people haven't, but you know, the whole soul, the spirit, the essence of our being is not relaxed if we don't know our purpose. We're constantly scattered, not knowing why we're really here. What is our purpose day to day? What is our purpose in life? Once we're established in our being, we're able to take action. We're we're established in our being when we have these five levels of relaxation and knowing our purpose in life. Then we can take action and set out what we want to do because then we become fulfilled in life with freedom and fulfillment. When we see ourselves with a purpose in life, it allows us to connect to our higher self, our core of being, and we become established in self. And no matter what obstacle falls on our path, we have the resilience to move on without much difficulty. 
Spiritual relaxation is managed with meditation and it should be learned with a systematic method to give you the sustainable results. What is the outcome of relaxing into being on all five levels? Well, that's the key. You have acceptance of what is, tolerance of yourself and others, creativity, intuition and clarity, resilience and endurance to stay in the day-to-day happenings of life. And you have joy while living in the moment. And what you have most is positive thoughts. And positive thoughts bring positive experiences. When any of these levels are out of balance, we experience a mind hijack and become out of balance. When we learn to focus our energy, a sequence to focus the energy of our mind, we're able to access and experience all five levels of relaxation and well-being. We become established in our being and then can take action. Well, everyone, that brings us to the end of this episode. And if you'd like to be notified weekly for our new podcasts, please subscribe. The Susan Taylor podcast does come out weekly and it's available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn. If you'd like to rate us and you really are enjoying it, only rate us if it's positive, please do sign into your iTunes account and give us five stars. I'd really appreciate it and the community would really appreciate it. Contact us at susantaylor.org if you have any questions, comments, or feedback. And I'd like to say again, thank you for listening. Our podcast does come out weekly. And with any questions, comments, something you might want to hear, just contact us at susantaylor.org. And until next time, remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment.